Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess with So Many Creations. In this video, I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through my olive handbag. I absolutely love this bag. I know I say that every time, but I'm really obsessed with this one. I've been carrying one for several weeks now, and it's just the perfect size. It has just what I need for my wallet, my essentials, and I can even fit my notebook in here. So let's take a look at the bag. It's a really simple style. There's not a lot of hardware or zippers, which is probably great if you just got finished making my Margie zip bag. On the front, there is a flap. You can use any kind of closure that you like. You could even skip the flap if it's not your thing. There's a zippered pocket underneath, a double zippered opening, and inside it is fully lined with a zippered pocket. I went real simple on the zippers this time and easy on the pockets. When I zip this up and close my flap, there's an extra little detail I wanna show you on the back here. So instead of just throwing a flap on there, I also added this really nice little flap base, just this little handle here. I added some optional rivets just to make it pretty. I have a removable handle, it's not adjustable, and I added a few rivets onto mine as well. I have some D-rings down here, and there's actually two options for D-rings that I'll show you in the video. You can add them here, or you can add them to the back. If your machine is a little bit fussy and you need another option as to where to add your D-rings, I got you covered. So this was one of my tester samples. This one has rainbow hardware with leopard because you can't go wrong with leopard. And then this one is my bag. This is my purse that I'm carrying right now. You can see it's full. I'm not even really sure what's in there. But anyway, I know, I know my wallet's in there, but I really don't know what else. So this one I did out of black and white with a little pop of rose gold. If you need the pattern, which I would suggest grabbing before we start so you can get all your cutting and prep work done, or any other supplies, including any of the cork hardware or zippers I show you today, you can get them right here on my website. If you like videos like this, don't forget to click subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up. All right, let's get into it. I went ahead and prepped all of the pieces that I need. This bag actually doesn't have a lot of pieces, so the prep work is pretty quick. And since the entire outside is cork, it actually goes super quick because you don't have to worry about fusing any interfacing. And you'll see when we get to the lining, there's only two pieces of interfacing for the whole bag. So for the outside, I have my two A pieces. Now remember that A is going to be wider than it is high. And that's very important to remember, especially if you want to use a directional cork. If you do, you're going to need to purchase extra cork. Otherwise, you're going to have your pieces upside down the way that you would be cutting it from the standard 18 by 27. So just keep that in mind. I know we all have quite the collection, so I'm sure you could make that work if you wanted to. So I have my two A pieces. Those are not interfaced, just cork. I have two pieces for B. B is going to be my handle. So for the handle for this bag, I chose not to do an adjustable handle. That is usually my go-to, but for this, since it's a small bag, it felt more like an arm bag or a small shoulder bag. So I am going to do a removable handle, but it is not adjustable. If you want to make it adjustable, you can very easily just add more strips or cut longer strips from another piece of cork. So B, again, no interfacing. From my accent color, which I could do in the same exact cork if I wanted to, I could do the entire outside as one color. I chose to do an accent of a different color and I'm using the caramel. I have two squares for my flap. Those, again, no interfacing. Those are my C pieces. I have one piece for D. This is going to be for my flap base. No interfacing on that. That is all cut and ready to go. For my lining, I have my two E pieces right here. E is quilter's cotton with interfacing on the back. If you want to use something heavier like a waterproof canvas, you can go ahead and completely skip the interfacing in this bag. So I have two pieces for E, again, wider than they are high. Keep that in mind when you're doing your cutting. I have F. F is going to be for the outside front pocket. It's going to be the lining. I did not put any interfacing on this. And I also have G, G is going to be, it's actually gonna go this way. This is for my inside zippered pocket. And again, this one is going to be taller than it is wide. So just keep your direction in mind. Now that we've gone over all of the basics, let's grab the rest of our supplies and hardware. 
I've gathered all the rest of my supplies, including the hardware that I need. So let's go ahead and go over that. As far as zippers, there's going to be three. You will need a longer double pull zipper for the outside. You can do this with a single pull, but I just think this style bag is better with a double pull and I think it looks a little bit nicer, but that is totally up to you. So I have my zipper all ready to go here. I have two smaller zippers. One is going to be for the front outside zippered pocket. One is going to be for the inside lining uh, back zippered pocket. One yard of zipper and four pulls will do all of those zippers if you need to go shopping. For my handle hardware, I grabbed two one inch swivel hooks and two one inch D-rings. Remember, this is not an adjustable handle. It is just a removable handle. If you want to make this an adjustable handle, you will need to add a slide. We will not be going over that in today's video. I also grabbed for my flap closure, a flip lock. If you would like to skip the flap, you can completely leave that off the bag. It will not affect the structure. I really like how it looks. I just think it adds a little something extra to the bag. But if adding a piece of hardware is not your thing or you don't like the flap, you can 100% skip that. So as far as the closures are concerned, use whatever you would like. I grabbed a flip lock. I really like how that looks on this bag. You can use a twist lock, a magnet, a thumb lock, anything that you like. I did grab some rivets. Those are totally optional, not included in the pattern, but I'm thinking that I might want to rivet my handles and maybe even add some to the back where my flap is. I'm kind of deciding that as I go. I also have my cam snap and I have the correct dies. I have my cutting die and my rivet setting die. I decided instead of doing the typical um, handmade tag with the prongs, that I was just going to add this onto one of the zippers, probably just on the outside, maybe the pocket, maybe the top, I'm not sure. I do like to add a handmade tag, but I thought I'd mix it up a little bit today. I don't usually use the little clip-on ones, so I thought, why not? As far as the rest of the supplies, I have, of course, my rotary cutter. I used my ruler and mat as well to do all of my cutting and prep work. I have plenty of clips and some pins. I did grab some glue as well. This is the Guterman HT2. I'm using that for my flip lock hardware. I have a couple kinds of tape here. Because the outside is cork and the inside is quilter's cotton, I am going to use the eighth inch double stick tape to do my zipper. And I'll also show you how to use it for the outside zipper, the longer one. So I love to have this around. Since I'm using cotton on the inside for that zippered pocket, I actually like the Steam Seam 2, the light Steam Seam 2. You can easily use double stick tape for that, but this is kind of a habit for me. I've used it for years. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that for my inside pocket. I of course have some marking tools here. One of my corks has a natural on the back and one has a black back. So I have a chalk pencil as well as a heat erasable friction pen. I of course have my favorite turning tool, which also has a seam ripper, because who knows if I'm gonna need that or not. I have my scissors, and I've grabbed my Aurifil 40 weight cotton thread. That's what I'm going to be doing my piecing as well as my top stitching with. As far as sewing machine needles, I have a 9014 Microtex in my machine. That is my favorite for bag making. And as far as templates are concerned, there is one template in the back of the pattern. You can go ahead and cut that template out. If by chance you have the Jane wallet set, you can also use this one for your flap. So it's kind of a two for one. This one came out when I released the Jane wallet in January of this year. So if you already have a set or if you were debating on getting the set, uh, you can definitely use this half for your flap. I also have my ultimate zipper template. This is what I use for all of my zippers pretty much from here on out. So now that I have all of my supplies, let's go ahead and get right into step one. In step one, you're going to do your fusing first, and that's going to be on the two lining E pieces. I've already gone ahead and done that. So I am going to finish up step one by sewing my handles together, or my handle pieces together, I should say, and doing my top stitching. In the pattern, it's going to show you how to do a double fold handle. And the reason I've done it in the pattern that way is because I don't know what kind of machine you're using. A lot of domestics don't want to handle something too thick. And since this is going to be folded over when the hardware is added, I felt that it was a little bit easier to show you how to do a double fold handle. 
in this case, in mine, I did have enough cork and so would you. I went ahead and cut wider pieces. I cut three inch instead of two inch so that I can go ahead and do a trifold handle. I've done this in a few other videos. It is my favorite way of finishing handles. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that. I've already gone ahead and marked on the back because I like to make a diagonal seam when I'm doing a trifold. You can do this with a double fold as well. One thing to keep in mind is that if you are doing a double fold handle, you also have the option of sewing your pieces right sides together straight and opening up that seam. What I like to do is just like the pattern shows, cut my seam in the middle and like split it, kind of flip it so it half goes up and half goes down. I find that it makes my handle stronger and it also helps to reduce bulk. If you do that on a trifold, it's going to be kind of a mess for you. So I would definitely recommend doing the diagonal seam. So I've just marked from this corner to this corner. I always double check my sewing, make sure that that's gonna go in the right direction. So if you are a quilter, this is just like binding. You will understand this probably a little bit better, especially if you've done it before. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a couple clips here, head over to my machine, and I'm just gonna sew right across this line here. Once that is sewn, I will trim a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I will give this a quick press. I'll come back and show you how I do my trifold. I did my stitching, and then I did my trimming, so I have my diagonal seam here. I pressed it open, and on the back, I went ahead and marked one single line. That line is going to be a third of the width, which is actually the finish size of the handle. So this is three inches. This line is one inch over from one of the edges. It really doesn't matter which one that you do. I used a permanent pen because that's what I had, but you can mark it with anything that you like. So now I'm gonna use my eighth inch double stick tape and I'm going to run a bit of it, not quite on the edge, close, all the way down one side and I am putting it on the side further away from the line because that's the side that we're gonna start with. And once I have that pushed down, I'm just take that paper right off and I'm gonna fold this right up to the line, just like this. You can use eighth inch or quarter inch tape. I like the eighth inch. I've been using that a lot lately because I can keep it out of the seams for the most part. On this handle, it may end up getting stitched over a little bit because it's hard to really avoid it the way that this is folded, but I'd rather stitch through a little bit of eighth inch than a lot of quarter inch, if that makes any sense. And I just find that I have better luck not sewing through it if I can. If I do sew through it, I just keep an alcohol wipe nearby and wipe off my needle. So now on the opposite side, I'm gonna do the same thing. And this time I want to pull this edge as close to the other side as I can and I try not to go over. And what I mean, I'll do this before I take the paper off. I don't wanna be really far back, but I don't want this hanging over that edge. I kinda wanna get it so it's like a thread's width away from that folded edge. That's going to keep my um, raw edge in the back, or what I would call the back, and it's going to make sure that when I do my top stitching that I catch it. Because when you're doing eighth inch top stitching, if this is too far away, you're not gonna catch it. And unfortunately, I've had that happen to me a couple times. The only way to fix it is to completely start over because it just will never look right. You have these like gaps where the thread didn't catch and it just doesn't look good. Okay, I'm all set now. So I'm gonna go over to the machine and do my top stitching. As I usually do, I like to do an eighth and a quarter. So I'm going to do an eighth down both edges and then a quarter of an inch from both edges. I love a double top stitch. I've got my handle all top stitched and ready to go. I went ahead and trimmed off two smaller pieces. These are going to be for my tabs. That's where my D-rings are going to go. My handle itself is about 30 inches long, which for me is a great length. If you want to make the most of it and you want your handle as long 
as possible. You can actually make these out of the leftover you have from your accent co uh, cork. You don't have to trim them off of here. I just find it's a little bit easier because they're small. So if I just do all my folding and top stitching, get this piece all prepped, I find it easier to just trim them off at the end. So that's just my preference. So as far as adding your D-rings, depending on what your machine can handle, there's two ways that you can do this. If you have a heavy duty machine or you know that yours can handle some thickness, you can definitely fold it completely in half like this. You can go ahead and just stitch right down here about an eighth of an inch. And then I would also stitch close to the D-ring to keep it from flipping. Keep in mind that these are going to go into a bulky part of the bag. They're going to sit on top of the zipper when you're all done. So if your machine can't handle six layers of cork on top of other layers, what you might want to do is back this up a little bit. Give yourself about a quarter plus, quarter to three eighths of an inch. That's going to help you to reduce the bulk and it's going to sew a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and do that for today's demo. One of the other things that you can do is you can make your tabs separately and you can uh, make them double fold even if you make your handle triple fold. That is what we're going to do with our flap. We have a flap base, which is essentially a small handle. We're gonna do the same thing with that to make sure that we don't have too much bulk. I always make my patterns domestic friendly, so I wanna make sure that you're not gonna have any issues and that you have some options. So my D-rings are all ready. I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch right down here, keep those ends down, and then I'm gonna sew as close to the D-ring as I can to keep it from flipping. As for my handle, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and add some rivets. So I'm going to just add my swivel hook onto each end. You would be doing the same exact thing. You would just be sewing. So I'm just gonna fold it over and either stitch right here or add a clip, make some marks and add my rivets. And I'm gonna go ahead and add rivets. All right, I went ahead and just used my rivet press to set those. Are they a little bit too close? Yes, they are, but that is what happens when you don't measure. So don't do what I do do better. I'm going to head over to the machine and stitch these and then we'll be all set with that. My handle and my tabs are all set so I'm going to go ahead and set those aside for now. I just wanted to mention a couple of quick things before we move on to our next step. For my tabs, because I didn't fold them in half, I folded them about three quarters of the way to reduce bulk. I actually did not sew any closer to the D-ring. I just sewed right here. This D-ring is really tight in there. It's not going anywhere. So I don't think that it's going to be an issue. If you fold it in half, you might want to add that extra stitching. It's just to make sure that your D-ring is not going to turn on you when you're using your bag. As far as my handle is concerned, I just went ahead and riveted. I didn't do any stitching. And the reason I skipped the rivets on the tabs is because they're so small and it's going to be so low into the zipper when the bag is done that I don't think you're going to notice it. So as far as this bag is concerned, if you want to do it in cotton, the only difference that you're going to have to make um, your outsides, your flap, everything is going to be prepared the same. Your handle is going to be one of the places that you'll need to make some changes. And if you've done any cotton bags or watched any of my videos where I've done a cotton handle, you definitely know how to do that. You're going to interface your cotton handle and fold it four times. So for an inch finished, you would cut it four inches wide by however long you want it. And then you're going to go ahead and fold those edges in towards the center and fold it so that all your raw edges are inside. Cotton frays and we don't want to have any of that fraying. As far as the ends are concerned, if it was interfaced, I would skip some interfacing down towards the end, maybe an inch or so, just to make sure that when I wrap it over my hardware, I can reduce some of the bulk. And when I wrap a piece of hardware with a cotton handle, I fold it twice. So I consider this once because I folded it over one time. With cotton, I fold it once to hide the raw edge and then I bring that down. So this right here would end up being a fold. My raw edge would be in here somewhere and and I wouldn't even notice it. Again, if you're going to rivet your handle, it really doesn't make a difference. You can use the interfacing if you would like all the way down to the end. Same thing would go for the tabs and you would want to have both of your edges aligned on the bottom. That way those raw edges are sewn into a seam. The only other difference that you would need to make in this bag is going to be for the outside front zipper. And when we get there, I'm going to do it in the cork style, which means I'm not finishing it the same way because again, I can leave my edges raw 
If you want to do your outside of your bag in cotton, you would just want to do a traditional zippered pocket on the front, and that's exactly what we're going to do in the lining. So it's definitely not a lot of changes if you want to use a fun canvas or a cotton, something that frays. For step three, we're going to add our outside front zippered pocket. I have my eighth inch double stick tape, I have one of my smaller zippers, and I have one of my A pieces. On the back of A, I've already gone ahead and I've marked my center, measured down as per the pattern, and I drew my box using my ultimate zipper template. So now that I have the box drawn, instead of doing a traditional pocket where I'm going to sew my fabric first, I'm actually just going to go right ahead and cut it. So I have my mat here and my rotary cutter. So I like to cut these openings with a rotary cutter for as much as I can because I just find that they come out a lot smoother and cleaner. If you're using scissors like you have on traditional pockets, sometimes you get some not so great edges. Your scissors will kind of, you know, veer, veer off a little bit and you'll get a jagged edge. I want the straightest, cleanest edge that I can get. So I go ahead and do those two long sides and then I hold my rotary cutter right on that line and kind of just push down and push down. Now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to grab the center here and I cut that so I can get right down as close as I can and finish up this little end. And it's pretty much already cut. There we go. And do the same thing down here. If you're not comfortable doing it with a rotary cutter, you can use scissors. Just be very slow and stay on your line as best as you can. All right, and snip that out of the way. Because we don't have a pocket that we're sewing on here, we're not going to have that option to smooth this edge out with the iron. This is the edge as it's going to be in the bag. So I just like to do it as cleanly as I can. So one other thing that I wanted to talk about before we go forward is about doing zipper overlays. So if you watched my Margie video, you saw that I added a zipper overlay to the back. I love how they look. They're absolutely, you know, so much fun and pretty easy to do. The reason that I am not adding one to here is not because I don't like the zipper overlay. It's because the flap is going to cover the zipper anyway. So with the flap being there, I'm not going to see the zipper overlay. Also, what I don't care for is when the zipper overlay peeks out from under the flap. I don't know why, but that just bothers me. So I don't personally like it. If you want to do an overlay, absolutely you can. I would just be very careful to keep it as narrow as you can on the sides so it doesn't stick out from the flap. Um, also, if you're skipping the flap, you can definitely do one and you don't have to worry about that. And if I was skipping the flap, I would 100% add an overlay. But for me, it's not my favorite on this one because I'm doing a lot of work that I'm going to cover up anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that. If you are interested in doing a zipper overlay, you can watch the Margie video. You can also watch the Ultimate Zipper Template um, demo video, and I've talked about them in both of those. So now that I have this cut out, on the back here, I'm going to take my eighth inch tape, and I'm just going to put this not right up against the edge, because I'm trying to keep this away from where I'm going to sew. And I'm just going to add some strips. I'm using a purse zipper, which has a wider tape, so I know that I have some flexibility here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get that down, and now I'm just going to get my paper up. And I have my zipper. Place my zipper right side up. And put my pocket right there. And wow, I did not know how much I was going to like this zipper with this. I, I picked it out, but ooh, I really like that. Okay, <laughs> just got very excited. So now that my zipper is in place, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine, stitch about an eighth of an inch all the way around. For the next part, when we get to the pocket, I just wanted to kind of mention that is going to have some stitching, and I'll show you when we get there, that's going to show on here. As of right now, I have been using a light purple color thread. I am going to switch to my beige 
for this part as well as for the pocket. And when we get to the next part, I'll explain why. But just remember, a little tiny bit of your stitching is going to show. I've got my zipper all stitched in to piece A. And in order to finish this up, I need my F piece. So I'm gonna turn this over to the back. I've already got the center marked on A. So the first thing I did on my F, and yes, I am working on the right side of the fabric. I marked my center with my heat erasable pen. I then went and I added my double stick eighth inch tape on the side as well as the bottom. And I'm gonna show you why. So because of the construction of this bag, this is going to be obviously a lot smaller when it's done. And this pocket, if we did it the entire size of this bag, we would lose a lot of the pocket and it would just be kind of awkward. We would have very odd places for our things to go. So we need to kind of set the sides in the bottom of this. So the reason that I'm using double stick tape instead of pins is number one, I don't like to pin my cork. You could if you really wanted to, or if you were using cotton for your outside, but using the double stick tape was is going to keep my pocket exactly where I want it so that when I'm sewing, I don't have to worry about it shifting around too much. This pocket, as you can probably see, is a lot smaller than this piece, and that's kind of the way that it needs to be. When the bag is done, it will work out nicely, but for right now, it kind of looks a little bit weird. So I'm going to just line up my center mark, and I didn't put any tape on the top edge because I can add some clips there, and I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna kind of clip that in place and get my edges nice and smooth, just like that. And using the tape is gonna keep this nice and flat, keeps it exactly where I want it. So when we're all set, this down here, this is going to be the bottom of the bag. We're not even gonna see this stitching. This stitching right here, some of it is going to end up in a seam. Some of it will show at the end, just a little tiny bit towards the top. So I would highly recommend that for this stitching, you use something that matches your cork as best as possible. Even if it's not the color that you're using for the rest of your piecing or for your top stitching or anything, I would find something that matches this as best as you can so that if there is a little bit of stitching showing when you're done, you can hide it. So I'm gonna take this to my machine and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around the F pocket. In my bobbin, I had kind of a mauve purple color and I actually found that it blended better than the beige that I had used on the zipper. I thought it was gonna be the opposite way, so I'm actually really happy. You might not even see it on camera and that's okay with me. That means it blends in really well. But my stitching is kind of right here. I do have a box around the front of the bag. Again, most of that's gonna be gone when we get to the finishing steps. On the back, I didn't have any shifting. I was sewing through the eighth inch tape. Yes, you are gonna, you're gonna sew right through it. But my pocket did not shift until I got to the top where I didn't use tape because I had clips and I have one little tiny pucker. But that's just to show you that the tape really does do a great job. And yes, I did sew around it. My thread did not break, I didn't have any issues. But at this point, if I need to change my needle or clean it up with an alcohol swab, that's totally fine. So now that this is done, I can go ahead and set this aside and we're gonna start working on our next step, which is our flap. For step four, we're going to trim and sew the flaps. So I have both of my C pieces here. They are square, so I'm not super concerned what edges I'm going to trim from. But on each of them, I'm going to trim one edge using my curved template that's in the back of my pattern. Or in this case, I'm going to use my Jane template. And so what I like to do because I'm using the acrylic template is place it on here and just go ahead and do my trimming. I can use my rotary cutter. And what I have found is that if I put my rotary cutter not completely straight up, but kind of at a slight angle, it trims really nicely. I had to do that off camera. It is too hard to cut with the mat out here. It's too far away from my body. Um, but anyway, if you have the Jane template, you can go ahead and use your rotary cutter right up against it. If you don't, or if you would prefer not to, you can just use the template in the pattern or even this one, mark your flap and then cut it with scissors, whichever is easiest for you. This flap, unlike the Jane wallet, is going to be sewn and then turned. So if your curve is not 100%, it's not totally perfect, that's okay. So I have both of my pieces trimmed. I'm going to place them right sides together. 
and I'm going to sew the side, the curved bottom, and then up the side. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this top edge open. So I'm going to place these right sides together now that they're all trimmed. Just use a few clips here and I'm going to take this over to the machine and using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew the sides, the curved bottom, and that's it. I stitched my flap all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam and before I turn it and press it, I can trim my curve right here if I want to. You can go ahead and just make some little snips like this to help it turn. Or if you want, you can get right in there and kind of just trim some of that bulk away. Whatever you find is better, you can do either or. So I like to kind of trim it a little bit just like this. I just find that it sits better when it's all done and it presses really nicely. So now that I have that finish, I'm gonna go ahead and turn. And this is where my favorite turning tool comes in because I wanna make this as smooth as I can. So I'm just kind of pushing as much with my fingers. And then I take my turning tool and I just kind of smooth it like that, just like so. I get a nice smooth curve. Pull some of my little threads here. I don't know where those came from. And just keep smoothing that. And then if I take this over to the iron, I can also press that a little bit. Or I can just add some clips, whichever suits me at that moment. And then I am ready to do my top stitching. And for this, I think I might do a double top stitch. I do like that. So I'm probably going to do an eighth and a quarter. You can do whichever you would prefer. I finished up top stitching my flap. I did an eighth and a quarter and I used that purple thread so it kind of blends nicely. So you might not be able to see that on camera, but it's okay. So now that my flap is done, I'm going to make the flap base. And that is this part right here. So now that my flap is complete, I'm going to work on piece D, which is my flap base. And basically this is just a very short little strap or a handle. It's gonna be treated the same way and it's going to cover up the bottom of our flap, just to add a little extra accent. So even though I did my handles as a trifold, I still cut this as a two inch wide piece instead of three. And I'm going to just fold this in half. For me, I'm totally fine with having one raw edge and one finished edge because I will put the raw edge down towards the bottom. If you want to mark the center and fold your edges inward like so, you are welcome to do that. I'm just going to do this real quick and easy and fold it in half. I'm gonna top stitch it the same way I did my handle, so I'm gonna do an eighth and a quarter and then I will be right back. So here is my little flap base. Again, it's just a short little handle, nothing too special here, but it's just going to add a little extra touch and it's going to cover up the end of the flap, the bottom edge of the flap. That's the part that we didn't finish. For step six, we're going to start adding our hardware in. So for this one, I am doing a flip lock. I've grabbed the oval half and I've already taken it apart. I used my screwdriver and just removed those two screws. I grab some glue, a removable pen, my scissors, and I also grab my twist lock and flip lock template. I forgot to show this earlier, but there are two different ways that you can mark your flip lock or your twist lock, and I'm gonna show you both of them. So in the pattern, it's going to show you how to do it with the back, and I always use the downfall of having nails. There we go. I always use the back piece to mark because there isn't a ridge going around it. With this piece, you can see that there's a ridge. You can't mark the screw holes. So marking with the front is actually harder. So I like to mark with the back. So I'm gonna show you how I do it with this. And then I'm also gonna show you how to use the twist lock template. I've also grabbed a pin here. I'm gonna go ahead and find my center. And as far as the marking is concerned, because we're cutting through all the layers, it doesn't matter what side you mark on. So like I said, I'm not sure which side I want to be the front. I like both colors of top stitching, so I'm gonna decide that right before I add my glue. But as of right now, it does not matter which side I mark on. So I just use a pin to find my center. If you would prefer to measure, you can do that as well. And I'm going to take the back here. I'll show you this part first. And I'm going to place the back right above the top stitching. I don't wanna place it too far down that it's going to hang off the edge. I also don't wanna cut into my top stitching. So I like to place it about a quarter of an inch from the edge or just at 
slightly above the top stitching. If you only did an eighth of an inch, you still might wanna go up about a quarter of an inch or so. So now that I have that in place, I'm just gonna kinda hold that and step back, make sure that that looks pretty centered and I'm happy with that. I'm going to use my heat erasable pen and I'm going to mark inside the rectangle in the center. And I'm also going to mark the screw holes. The reason is I need to cut all of that out to make sure that it's clear enough for this piece to go through. And we'll get to that in just a second. So now that I have that marked, I can go ahead and cut. But before I do that, I wanted to show you how to use the twist lock template. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I'm not sure which piece I need, is I'm gonna check the back, and I know that I wanna be marking on this side, the flip lock side. And this component right here, this oval, this actually includes the inside as well as the screw holes. So I don't have to mark separate pieces, I just have to mark one. So what I would do here is place this, aligning that center mark, and I am going to, I think I was a little crooked here. Let me just double check. I think that shifted when I was drawing it. That is crooked. So I'm actually going to redo this a little bit. That's what happens when you are holding things far away from you. So what I would do with my template is I would line up the center on my pin, and I'm going to slide this up so that this part right here is sitting right at the bottom of, or right at the top of my top stitching. I am struggling for words today. So just like that, make sure that that's right in the center. And again, I would go ahead and mark, but I would mark all the way around instead of marking the center and the screw holes. This includes all of that. So the template makes it a little bit easier to line up. This is a quarter of an inch right here. So that is going to sit right at that top stitching. It's accommodating for the bottom part of this right here. So if I put that on there, you can see that is essentially the bottom of the back. So I want to put the bottom of the template right at my top stitching. I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. Now that I have everything marked, I can take my pin out. And what I'm going to do, and what you're going to do if you have marked the holes and you don't have a template, is you're going to be cutting around those. So you're going to be cutting all the way around here and around the screw hole. So you're making a very long kind of an oval here, okay? And the best tip that I can give you is to place your scissors, let me get this started here first. Well, you want to place your scissors on the outside of your pen mark. So you can see I'm right on the outside. When I'm done, I don't wanna see any of my pen marks. That means that my hole should be the right size or pretty close to it. It's very daunting, I know, to be cutting a hole into something that you just finished and top stitched and made look really pretty. But if we don't do this, we can't get our hardware in. So just gonna keep trimming. And because I have a couple of layers of cork, sometimes it will shift a little bit and one side will have a larger hole than the other, we can always go back in and trim. So once I have that trimmed, what I'm gonna do to check is place my front right here. Again, it doesn't matter which is the front side. And I'm gonna put that right on top there. And can I see my screw holes as well as the opening? Yes. Is it a little snug? Yes, but that's totally fine. That's what we want. If we can't see all those things, the center and the two screw holes, you're gonna to need to cut it a little bit larger. So now that I have that ready, now I'm going to turn my piece over. I'm gonna set this on here so that I can actually pick it up. My nails are way too long right now. I'm going to use my glue because I always add glue. The reason is this is only twisted or only screwed into itself. It is not screwed into the fabric, which means it can come out and we don't want that. We don't wanna do all this work and then have it come out. So I'm just adding glue on the front as well as the back. You don't have to go overboard. Just a little bit will go a long way. All right. So now I have to decide which is the front and which is the back. I need to see my front. <laughs> I can't decide. I think I actually like the beige. I kind of like that it has a little bit of contrast. 
I'm going to go with it. Okay, so this is going to be my front. So I'm going to take the front. The front is right side down. I'm going to take my flap front side down. Put that right on here. Nice and snug. Hold on to that. And then I'm going to take the back and put the back right on top. And get that lined up and drop my screws in. And I'm good to go. Is it crooked? A little bit. Is everything I do imperfect? Also, yes. Okay, well, I'm happy. So, <laughs> so that is part number one. So now that our flap is done, we're going to go ahead and add the second part of the flip lock. So for this, you're going to need the front. I've already gone ahead and made a mark in the center. I just used the mark that we had done earlier for the back. And I measured down as per the pattern. I've just made a little line right here, all with a heat erasable pen. I'm going to use my washer and I'm going to make sure I know what openings I need here. So looks like I'm marking the ones on the end. So I'm going to line that up, get it right in the center. And I'm just going to make my marks like I would normally do. Now here's the big difference for this. Because there is a pocket back here, we don't want to go through the pocket, through the cotton part. You just want to go through the front part here of the zipper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some cork as reinforcement, and I'm also going to add a piece of cork to cover up the washer. So first things first is I'm going to cut my two little slits. And what I like to do is just poke in and out just like that. That way I don't have to worry about overcutting. So I have my two little openings done. I'm going to place my washer through, or excuse me, my hardware through. And on the back here, I'm gonna put something in between. You can use a scrap of interfacing. I had a little scrap of cork, so I'm just gonna place that there. That's gonna to help to cushion it a little bit, give it a little something extra to grab onto. I'm gonna put my washer there, and I'm going to fold the prongs of the wa the I'm going to fold the prongs inward on top of the washer, just like that. Give it a real good push, okay, like so. And then on the back here, I'm also going to use a little bit of glue and tape, and I'm going to put a piece of cork over that. I don't want to scratch my hand when I'm using this, so I want to cover it up. Now, in case you're wondering, is there another way or a different way we could have done this? Is there any, could we have done the pocket last? It's really not going to make much of a difference, and I find that adding this piece before the cotton makes it a little bit more challenging to sew. This is kind of clanking on the sewing machine. It just gets in the way, and because of this style of pocket, this is kind of how we have to do this. If you are not happy with that, you can always um, do a traditional pocket, but I just figured whenever I can do kind of a shortcut, I would prefer to do that, and this really doesn't bother me. I just want to cover up that washer because I don't want to scratch my hands. So what I'm going to do with this little piece of cork is I'm going to use some tape. The tape is going to hold it while the glue sets, and the glue is going to make sure that this does not ever come off. If it does, I can always fix it, but why give myself more work? Okay, so I'm going to put my tape there and get my paper off. Get this all prepared. All right, and then I'm just going to take my glue and just put that right there in the middle. Like so. That's stuck to my finger. Okay. And place this This would not be as much of a challenge if I had a third hand. I'm just saying. All right, stick that right down. And that is how it's gonna look. I can clean up these little edges right here that are sticking out. I don't need all that. Okay. If you want to add a piece of tape of any kind or anything else, you can obviously do that. I find that just gluing a little piece of cork is more than enough for me. And I'm good to go. Depends on whatever method you like to use here. So now that that's in place, that's going to sit and dry. And we're going to move on for our next step. Before we move on for our next step, I just also wanted to mention that this would be a great time to add your handmade tag. 
I would just keep your handmade tag kind of within this perimeter of the pocket right here. That's going to keep it towards the front of the bag. So if I was doing a prong style, I'd probably add it about right here, kind of down towards the bottom edge. So my corner of my pocket is right here. I would probably go at least a half inch up and a half inch over and put my handmade tag right there. I think that would be a great place for it. You could also put it up here. It would be under the flap or you could put it down here centered underneath your hardware. You could even put it on the flap if you want to. For step seven, we're going to be working on our other A piece. This is going to be for the back and we're going to add the flap as well as the flap base. That's the little handle that you made a little while ago. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my center. I've already made a little mark right here. This is the top edge of my back. Then I used my ruler and my heat erasable pen and I drew a line as per the pattern. So you wanna follow that measurement and just draw a line across here. If you're using a heat erasable pen, you can make it longer and it's not gonna make any difference. So I've got my, my strap right here, my little flat base, and I'm going to put some tape on there and also put some tape on the back side of my flap. So I'm just going to use this right here. Just going to place a little bit of tape. This is just to get us to the machine. So I'm just putting a little tape on the bottom of the flap, and then I'm going to put a little bit of tape kind of right here in the center of my flap base because I know I'm not gonna be sewing there. So I can keep the tape away from my machine. You can use eighth or quarter for this, but I'm just gonna put that right there in the middle. All right, trim that down a little bit. I'm going to find, can't get this tape off my finger. I'm gonna find the center of both pieces. So I'm just gonna fold this and add a pin. Finding the center is going to be crucial to getting this all lined up. You can also use your ruler. I'm just going to put a pin right there. And I'm gonna put a pin down at, the straight edge of my flap, like that. So I took the paper off of the tape here, and what I'm gonna do is just kind of fold this in half, like this, the tape is facing out, and I'm going to line up the pin with that mark and put this roughly a quarter of an inch below the line, okay? I want it a little bit below that line, make sure that it's straight. So I can double check with my ruler to check my placement here, but sometimes what I'll also do is just fold this in half and see, because sometimes it's just kind of hard to get it perfect, but my flap edges are totally lined up, so I'm good to go there. So my flap is about a quarter of an inch down from that line, so it's down towards the bottom. This is the top edge right here. I have my flap with the right side up, so there is the back of my flap keeping my pin in right there, and I'm going to take my flap base and line this up. I want my rough edge, my raw edge down, and I wanna line this up on that line. So that's gonna cover up the edge of my flap and line up in the center. So I'm hanging off pretty even on either side. Again, you can check that with your ruler if you want. Now that I have them both in, I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna stitch all the way around all four sides of the flat base. So I'm going to follow my eighth inch stitching up along the top. I'm gonna to go down on the bottom, across and back up. I finished up my stitching. I again followed my eighth inch top stitching, went all the way around all four sides. So now my flap is in place and my little strap is there. This little flap base is really more for decoration. Yes, it does cover the bottom edge of the flap, but I just thought it was something kind of pretty, a little something extra to add. So I'm going to erase my little pen marks that I have on here. And then I think I'm gonna add a rivet on each side, not because I need it, uh, just because I think it'll look pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be ready to start working on our inside zippered pocket. I did go ahead and add a couple of rivets to the flap uh, base and I absolutely love it. Not necessary, do not have to do it, but I just thought it added a nice little touch and I do have the, <clears throat> excuse me, the rivets on my handles. So I think it'll look really nice. This is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. So I have one of my E pieces. I'm going to be working at the top. So if you have something directional, make sure that you have the top right here. 
I've already gone ahead and done my markings on the back. I found my center. I used the measurements in the pattern. And because we're doing a traditional pocket where we will be sewing before cutting, I did also draw the Vs and the center line. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some pins. I've got my pins and I have my G pocket. So I'm going to place my G right side up, place my E right side down, trying to center that as best as I can. And I'm going to add a pin to each corner. If you are using waterproof canvas, or if you would like to try waterproof canvas, that's what I did on the bag that I am carrying. And in that case, you can do the same zippered pocket that we did on the cork. You don't have to do the traditional pull through pocket. Technically, I still think that waterproof canvas can fray, but for an inside zippered pocket, I'm not super concerned about it. It would be different if it was a handle. So since I'm using cotton, I'm going to do a standard pocket. I'm going to take this to the machine, stitch all the way around the outside of the box. Then I'll be ready to cut and pull through. I stitched all the way around the outside of the box. I'm going to take my pins out and keep them nearby. I'm going to go ahead and trim down the center. If this, if this part is not detailed enough and you would like a more in-depth tutorial on zippered pockets, I do have a great video on my channel that you can watch that will give you every tip and trick I have for installing a nice, neat, clean zippered pocket. Because we've done these so many times, I'm just kind of working my way through uh, as per the pattern. I do realize that some of you might be watching this and it might be your first video with me, so I don't mean to rush at all, but I do have another great video that you can watch if this was not enough information for you. So my pieces are right sides together. I stitched around the outside of the box. I cut the center with my scissors and I cut my Vs back. I didn't remove them. I cut back into the corners. Now I'm going to pull my pocket fabric through and I'm just about ready to head to the ironing board. And at the ironing board, I'm going to press this so I get a really nice opening just like this, and that's where my zipper is gonna go. So nice and clean and neat is the goal here. Once I have that pressed, I will put my pins back in to keep everything flat. I'm going to use my steam seam tape to fuse my zipper in place. So I'm gonna go do some prep work at the iron and I will be back. So I went ahead and pressed my pocket from the front and the back. So on the front, you can see that there's this tiny little bit of pocket sticking out. It almost looks like piping in a way, especially if you have a contrasting color, which I don't, but that's okay. If you see that, as long as it's nice and even, that's all that matters. We wanna make sure the front is nice and clean because that's where the zipper is going to show. And on the back here, I went ahead and I added a piece of steam seam tape on either side. Again, I like to use the fusible tape. You can totally use the double stick tape if that's your preference. I think it's just a habit of mine because of doing so many pockets on cotton that I just always use the fusible tape. But I'm just gonna go ahead and peel the paper off just like I would do if it was double stick tape. All right, get that out of the way. And now I'm gonna grab my last little zipper here. All right, we had two small zippers and a big one. I'm going to, again, place my zipper right side up. I'm going to place my lining piece on top. Make sure that that's nice and even. I'm going to get that fused in place, and I'm going to stitch, again, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Once the zipper is sewn in place, I'm going to remove my pins and close up this pocket. So you're going to take your bottom and top edges, bring them together, and you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way across. Once you have this seam sewn, we're going to pull the pocket down towards the bottom of the bag where it's going to naturally hang, and you're gonna close the sides. This is going to stay loose. You're not going to sew it to the actual lining piece. My zippered pocket is all finished. So you can see I have a fully lined pocket. When I turn it over, this is still loose. It's not sewn to the lining. I have my bottom and top edges kind of in the middle here because this seam doesn't matter. This does not have to be down here or up here or in any particular place. I sewed the sides and I gave it a quick little press. 
For step nine, we're going to start the assembly steps of the bag. So you're going to need one of your outside pieces. I grabbed my French. You're going to need one of your lining pieces, your double zipper, and you're going to want clips or double stick tape or both. And I'll show you in a minute. So since I am doing my front first, I grabbed the lining piece that doesn't have any pockets. I have a pocket on the front on the outside, so I want to put my lining pocket on the back on the inside. So I grabbed my plain piece, this is my E, and I grabbed my front. So what I'm going to do here, and you can do this one of two ways, I'm going to be placing my zipper onto my outside first, and then I'm going to add my lining piece. And because I don't want anything to shift, I like to baste these two pieces together first, either at the machine or using tape. And when I say baste, my version of basting is holding something in place within the seam allowance. So I don't mean that you have to have a long stitch necessarily. You can, but what I mean by baste is kind of just temporarily hold this in place. That way the zipper stays nice and straight. Now these assembly steps, if you've made any of my boxy pouches, the road trip bag or the Teddy tool tote, these are going to be very familiar to you. That is how we're going to assemble this bag, which is why it starts out so large and gets so small and there's no gusset. So what I'm going to do is if I wanna take this to the machine, what I would do is just place my zipper right sides together with the outside, add some clips and take this over to my machine and stitch it an eighth of an inch. If you do that, your zipper is going to stay nice and straight. So just like that, and I can go ahead, go to the machine and sew. But instead, since I have it right here, I'm gonna use my tape instead. So what I like to do, and this is accomplishing the same thing, it's just skipping me going to the sewing machine an extra time. So I'm just going to take my tape here. I'm going to place it right along the top edge. I won't be sewing through this. This is just holding it in place because my seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So just like that. All right, really push that down and peel my paper off. And now I can add my zipper. And at this point, I am hanging my poles off the edge because it does not matter. Right now, my poles can go anywhere that they want, but if they're hanging off the edge, they're not in my way. So just like that. Now my zipper is perfectly straight, which is exactly how I want it. So my poles are over here, that's totally fine. Next, I'm going to take my E piece and place that right sides together. And now I'm gonna use some clips I want to make sure that everything stays lined up here. I know my zipper is not going anywhere, but I want to make sure my lining is where I want it. And because I have the flip lock in the middle, it's pushing it just a little bit. So I'm just going to be extra careful, make sure this is all lined up. If you need to add clips on the sides where you're not sewing, you can do that as well. So now that I have that ready, I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way across the top edge, making sure to backstitch. I did forget to mention when sewing this, I like to sew with the cork on top. It helps it from stretching because the fabric here has more stretch than the cork, even though it's interfaced, I do like to sew on the cork side. If it's easier and you need to sew kind of in towards the middle, you can totally do that. So I did my quarter of an inch seam. I'm all sewn in place. Now I'm going to open this up and do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm not worrying about, <clears throat> excuse me, pressing or top stitching anything just yet. If it helps, you can add a couple clips just to kind of keep those edges out of the way. We just need to get to this side of the zipper. So I'm going to grab the back and I do have the flap here. So I'm just gonna push the flap out of the way. This is not a hard step, but it does get a little bit kind of bulky because of the flap, but I'm going to use my basting tape, my eighth inch again, and that's going to help, but you can see this kind of gets a little awkward for this step. <clears throat> so I'm just going to move my flap and grab my tape again, which is all twisted. All right. 
find it easier to work towards myself than to go across. I don't know why. Let's get my tape. Peel that off. And I'm going to push that flap out of the way. And I like to work kind of sideways. Keep that zipper as straight as I can. And I'm trying to keep my edges, my sides, as lined up as I can. I can always trim before I do some of the finishing steps, but I want to do the best that I can, kind of get that all lined up. Now that I have that in place, flip it over and I'm going to grab my other lining piece. I want the zippered pocket towards the top. So I'm just going to line up those sides and add a clip. And I'm also going to clip down here, just clip that bulk. It keeps it flat. And even though I'm not sewing there, it just kind of helps. So I do a few clips and then I come over to the side, lining this up. And good to go. So again, quarter of an inch, make sure I backstitch all the way across and I'm going to put the cork on top when I stitch. So now that both sides are stitched in, take our clips out here, take this over to the iron and give it a really good press and go ahead and top stitch either an eighth or a quarter or both on either side of the zipper. Just make sure you're not catching the flap. I gave it a quick press and I did a quarter of an inch top stitching. Again, you can do a quarter or eighth or both, whichever you would prefer. What you really want to make sure with the top stitching is that on the lining side here, your lining fabric, especially if you're using waterproof canvas, isn't rolling up into the zipper. You wanna really press this as best as you can, which is kind of hard between the hardware and the zippers. It gets a little bit bulky, but press it as best as you can. Make sure that that is nice and flat, okay? Because we wanna make sure that there's plenty of room for the zipper to move. For step 10, we're going to close up the bottom edges of the outside as well as the lining. So first thing you're going to do is move those pulls into the middle of the bag and make sure that you leave an opening. So you wanna make sure that you leave your zipper open at least a few inches. Take my outside bottoms of my front and back and pull those together just like this. Throw a few clips in here. Oops. All right. And I'm going to pull my lining pieces. Those are also going to be right sides together. And I'm going to clip the bottom edges of those as well. So I've got my lining right sides together and my outside right sides together. I'm just going to be clipping and sewing the bottom. So on the outside, which is the cork, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way across the outside bottom. So all the way across here, making sure to backstitch. On the lining, I'm just going to sew a few inches, maybe about two to three inches on each side, leaving a nice big opening in the center for turning later. Right, so I'm going to just trim a little bit of this zipper off just to get it out of my way. It's not totally flush with the bag yet. I've gone ahead and done my sewing, so my bottom edge of my outside is all sewn. The bottom edge of my lining, I've left a nice big opening in there for turning later. So now what we're going to do is pull these seams that we just sewed in towards the zipper. So I'm going to take that bottom seam, I just sewed that, I'm going to pull it, to the zipper. So it's on the right side of the zipper, lining it up right in the center. And I'm going to add a clip right here. And at this point, I can go ahead and trim my zippers even, but I'm going to hang on just because I find it a little bit easier for the next step. All right, I'm going to pull the bottom of the lining. I'm going to pull that seam to the wrong side of the zipper. So I'm lining those up and I'm adding some clips to hold all this bulk together. 
This is not where I'm sewing, but I want to make sure that that is all held in place nice and neat. So there is my zipper. There's my zipper there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm taking this bottom edge, pulling it right here to the zipper, adding a clip, and I turn it over, and I'm going to take the lining seam and pull that to the bottom of the zipper. Once I have the centers lined up, I'm going to just add a clip to each of these little sides here. These are going to become corners, so you might hear me call them either or. But what I'm doing is I'm clipping them separately. So my cork is separate from the interface piece, okay? The cork and the cotton are not being clipped together. They are in the center on the zipper, but not right here. And do the same thing over here. So I'm just smoothing this out, adding a clip to just the cork and just the cork. Flip that over and I'm adding a clip to just the interfaced cotton pieces like that. So now I have eight little sides, eight individual little pieces. I'm going to sew each of those individually. I am not sewing these together at all. So I have one, two, three, four, and four on this side. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam and I'm gonna sew as close to the zipper tape as I possibly can. So my stitching is not going anywhere past that point right there. That goes for all eight. Once you get towards the center, if you need to remove these clips, that's fine. I try to keep them in just to keep everything nice and sturdy. So I'm going to do all eight sides, quarter of an inch. I am not sewing them together and I am not touching the zipper tape. So I finished up all of my stitching. I sewed using a quarter of an inch from the corner in as close to the zipper tape without touching it as I could. So I still have a gap right here. That is going to be for the tabs. Now, if your machine has problems with thickness, you do have a second option for the tabs. And let me show you. This is one of my test samples right here. So this is while I was working on the pattern. And you can see I put my tabs back here. So they're sticking out from the top corner. That is totally optional. The one thing I just want you to note is that your bag kind of hangs forward. Once it's on your body, it's totally fine. But I just wanted you to be aware of that. It's a little bit less bulky spot. So if your machine is not crazy about this next step, you can try it and then you can do this because this is going to be one more step, two more steps before we get there. So if you don't have good luck with this, it's totally fine. You have a second option for your tabs. The tabs on this one, now this is my purse right here that I've been carrying around. My tabs are going to be right here on top of the zipper, and that's what I'm going to show you in this next step right here. And that is going to keep your purse upright, and it's not going to tip. It can tip a little bit because of the shape of the bag, but it's not going to tip the same way that the other one does. I've checked with several people just to see if that bothers anybody, to see if there is a good or a bad to it. And once it's filled, none of us seem to have an issue with it being either way. So I'm going to show you how to do it this way. And then I will also show you when the time comes, where you would add them if you want to do them on the back corners. So since we're going to place our tabs the traditional way that the pattern shows, you're going to take those and a couple of clips here. And I'm going to slide this in just like so, right into that opening. And I'm aligning the edge of the cork. I'm just poking it out a teeny tiny bit so I can see exactly where it is. Get that lined up and I'm gonna throw a clip in here. Put one on the other side. And now that that's in, this is where we're going to be sewing. So it's gonna be a quarter of an inch through here, the outside, through the tab, the zipper, and the lining. We're going to close up this gap that's open here. So again, on this side, I'm on the cork side. I want these on the outside of my bag. I'm going to take this and slide it in just like that, aligning the edge with the bag, add a couple of clips right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and sew across here. I like to sew a few times. I'm gonna go real slow, and if I need to, I can change my needle size, and I can also use a different foot.
All right, so I'm all stitched in. My machine went through it just fine. A couple of things, if you need to increase your stitch length or try a different foot, you can absolutely do that. You can try a larger needle. I don't usually do that unless I absolutely have to. For me, what I like to do is start right off the zipper, back stitch, and kind of work my way back and forth towards the zipper teeth, and then I can hand crank. One of the things is you're going to be next to some thickness because you have the D-ring and the folded over part of the tab. Even though you're not sewing through all those layers, they are right next to your foot and sometimes can kind of push you away. So some of my stitching was not a full quarter of an inch and I just went back in and adjusted. I hand crank a lot. I turn it just to make sure if it's going to hit anything, I'd rather do it slowly by hand than to have it hit while I'm sewing with, um, you know, and have it go at full speed and break my needle. Just be careful. It's definitely doable. And again, I am working on my domestic, so I know that you can do it as well. So if your machine was not happy about this, I will show you when we get to the point where you could add your tabs to the back. So I just went ahead while we were talking and trimmed up the edges of my zipper. I can cut that off right now. So now what I'm going to do is mark and cut my corners. For step 13, we're going to measure and cut our corners. So we still have eight separate corners here. We're going to measure and mark on each of those and cut them separately. I would highly suggest that you don't cut through all your layers at once. Things can shift. So what you're going to do when you're measuring your corners, this is a little bit different than it would be with a regular bag. We have a seam here and a fold here. So you're going to measure from the seam, not the edge, from the stitching, and from the fold. So you're going to use the measurement in the pattern and you're going to measure from here and from the fold. On the lining, I've already gone ahead and marked those. So I used my ruler and I measured from my sewing line and my fold and that is a square, okay? So right there. I've gone ahead and marked all four of these so I can cut them. I'll do the same on the cork. One other thing that you may want to do, this will be very helpful, is right here where you're going to be cutting into your stitching, it's very helpful to go and add a few back stitches right now just to kind of lock that in because once we cut this, you don't want to lose that seam. So I'm going to get all of these marked and cut. I'm going to head over to the machine and just kind of reinforce a little bit right there and then we will start boxing our corners. I got all my corners all cut, measure them all out and I did go ahead and reinforce just a little bit to make sure that none of my seams were going to pop out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reach inside here and I'm gonna open that center zipper as far as I can. I just find that it gives my bag a little bit more flexibility, works a little bit easier to do these corners, which can be a little tough. One thing to note, the corners are not difficult in that they're any different than any other bag. It's just that you, you have kind of an open section here and it's a little tight over here near where the zipper is. So just kind of take your time and don't be afraid to really wrestle with the bag. You're not going to hurt anything. So what you're going to do here, and I'm just going to start on one of the outsides. I kind of just push the lining out of my way and just straighten this out as best as I can. This is the pocket on the front that we sewed earlier. So I'm just kind of pushing that seam down and just straightening this out. If your corners aren't totally perfect, it's okay. You've got a little flexibility here, but just kind of straighten that out just like so. So in a normal bag, a regular bag like this Margie right here, your corners are going from front to back. They're going across this way. In this style bag, your corner is actually right here from top to bottom. So that is what you're straightening out right there. That's why it's going to get kind of large. So we made our bag wide, then we cut it down a little bit, and now we're going to really compact it. So let's do another corner. I would suggest not clipping all of them at once. It can be a little tedious, and then your clips will go flying. So again, I'm on the front here. I'm just going to push the lining out of the way. This is my corner. I'm grabbing in the center of the corner and straightening it out. So I'm just gonna straighten that out, add a clip, push the lining out of the way, straighten that out, add another clip, and one more. I find that three is a pretty good number, one on each end and one in the center. So now these are gonna be ready to sew. Now before we do any sewing, 
I'm going to turn this over to the back. So remember, the back is going to have that stitching from your uh, flap. If you want to add your D-rings here instead, you're going to add them onto the back. And what you're going to do is straighten out your corner. And I would suggest clipping it. So we're just going to clip this corner. All right. I'm not concerned with the lining right now. I'm going to do the same thing on the lining, but I'm just going to do it after I do the outside. So there's my back. I straighten that out, got it clipped. Do the same thing over here. And then I can add my tabs right up here. So I don't have another tab because I use mine, but we will just pretend I have a little pretend tab. So I have my tab here, all right, with my D-ring. So what I would do now is on the back, up towards the top where I have the flap, I would slide it in right here. So just like that, I'm going to slide my D-ring into there and clip that in place. And now I can sew it into that seam. So I don't have to sew it into the ends where the zippers are if it's too difficult. So again, just make sure that you're on the back, on the cork part, and you're up towards the top where your flap is attached. You'll see your rectangle where you've sewn around the flap base. Slide a D-ring in here and a D-ring in here, and you're good to go. Since mine are already sewn in, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the machine. I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch on all four of these outside corners. Then I'm going to clip my lining, and the last thing I'll have to do is turn and close up the lining. All right, so I got all of my corners done. Are they perfect? No, absolutely not. But they are the best that they're going to be. I try to really concentrate on the outside for the lining. It is what it is. If they're not great, it's okay. One thing to note, again, I try to clip just either one at a time or half of the bag instead of trying to do all eight at once. It just gets very overwhelming. When you're sewing, if I'm sewing this side right here, instead of doing it this way and kind of struggling, turn your bag so that this part that you're going to sew is the flat part on your bed of your machine. That's going to help you a little bit. So all the corners are sewn. The only hole that I have left is this one right here, which is in the bottom for turning. And I am ready to turn this right side out. Give it one final check. A final press and get my lining closed and I will have a new bag. I am concerned with the lining but I'm just really concentrating on the outside because I can go back in and kind of tuck the lining in and check that. Got four good corners out here and it looks like I've got four good corners in here. All right so the last thing to do is to close up the lining here. So I'm gonna do this by machine. I don't do anything by hand. I'm gonna just fold my edges under on both sides and stitch straight across. And then I'm gonna give this a final press. And when I press this, this is a little tip for any of these boxy style bags. I don't want my bag to be kind of round and puffy. I want it to be really square. So what I like to do is at my, at my iron is really press right here. And then I even will press across the top right here. Just really give that a nice press so it keeps that boxy shape. All right, it's all done. Before we take a look at it, I'm gonna call myself out on something. So I just want you to know, this line right here that you are seeing, the bottom of the pocket, is because I miscut my pocket. So nobody's perfect including me. I never thought that I was, but just so that you know. So your line will be down much further. You will not see that and you will have a slightly longer pocket. I could not read my own handwriting and I typed it in wrong. So this is why we make edits. <laughs> so if you're seeing that line, you will not see that line. Yours is going to be much longer and I'm probably going to include this in the beginning of the video just to make sure that everybody knows that I made a mistake. So all right, so let's take a look. Um, I have to admit, when I first decided to use the springtime cork for this bag, I was going to use the iris cork. The iris is almost an identical match to this flower right here, and I love the combination. I was debating between that and the forest green, and then I said, let me just check the caramel. And wow, I'm glad that I went with it. I love that it's contrast, but it's not 
so much contrast. Like it's still just a warm neutral. I could not be happier. I'm actually glad I didn't use purple. Mark that on your calendars. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> so I've got my flap. I've got my zipper underneath with my pocket. All right. I've got my little tabs right here. On the back, there is my beautiful flat base. I'm going to grab my handle and add my handle on. All right. There is my handle. And before I forget, I have my little handmade tag and I am going to put that right here on one of these zipper pulls. So there, I have my little handmade tag. All right, let's take a look at the inside since we're here. Get rid of one little thread. All right, there we go. That right there, if you can see it, is the little bit of stitching from the top of the pocket, but you can barely even tell. Um, there is my bag all finished. I have a nice big pocket inside, a zippered pocket. I felt like this bag was a, on the smaller side and didn't need too many extra pockets, so that's why I just did the two. If you want to add more, you absolutely can. You could add a pocket onto the back if you wanted to. Just be careful that it's not gonna get in the way of your flap at all. Other than that, I am so happy. I'm so pleased with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see how your olive handbags turn out. If you like videos like this, don't forget to click subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and give it a thumbs up. Until next time.